In this lesson, I'm going to show you how to open up the mask editor to remove the background of an image. Now, I'll have to explain a couple of things first. Now, this, these images here are provided in the Vinyl Master Samples folder, so you can come and see these anytime you like, and you can uh, experiment with them yourself and see how they're done. Let me explain to you what a mask is to begin with. Uh, the easiest way to probably do that is quickly jump into the mask editor. I'll just do that now, and I'll, I'll come back to how this works in a moment. Now you can see here this duck here has got the background removed. If I click on this button here, view mask in a single window like this, you can actually see this black area is the mask itself. And that is actually blanking out or masking out the background so that when we look at this duck we're only seeing this part is visible. Whereas the black part is not visible and the white is visible. And that's exactly what a mask is doing. I'll just cancel out of that. And I'll explain to you how that works a little bit better by doing this. Draw a black square and I'll send that to the back. You can see here how we're actually seeing the visible part of this image here and the rest of it's being masked out by the program as you can see there. And I can put this under the fly like this and you can see the same thing. So, just delete that. If I actually turn the mask off, in other words I'm not looking at the mask, you can see it's just a regular image. There's no, there's no, nothing special about this. In fact that it's just that there is a mask that's been applied to this image or an alpha channel that actually removes our visit. We can't visibly see the, uh, the masked out area, which means it's transparent. So it means you can put images together like this and you can create any manner of artwork and create some amazing effects using these tools. Okay. I can also invert the mask. So now what uh, was not visible is now visible and what was visible is now not visible by inverting the mask. So there's some, some of the things about how the mask works. That just gives you a basic rundown of what a mask is. It's, it's simply a way of creating an area that is made see-through in an image. That's, that's really what a mask is. Okay, And we can turn masks on and off, we can invert masks and we can edit them and we can create them from scratch. So if I take this duck here and if I wanted to add a mask to this duck, I would select it in object mode and I get my usual tools up here in the second row. You know, size, position, etc. And I get these mask tools here. If I click on that, I can come down and click on Create Edit Mask. So I click on that there and I'll just resize this window just so it fits in our video area here. And we get this picture of this duck here. And there is no mask. If I click on here, you can see there's no mask that's been made yet. So it's just a flat image. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a mask so that we don't see this greeny sort of background but we see the bird there. And we've got a whole range of tools to do that. On this left hand panel here, these are where all the tools that actually create the mask are located. And these tools up here, I mean obviously zoom in, zoom out, undo are pretty obvious. Smoothen and sharpen, uh, these actually uh, apply how the mask actually interacts between the two edges, between visible and not visible. But I'll get back to those in a moment. And we can also change our background colour, so we don't have to look at a, uh, like a checkered background. We can have different types of backgrounds. We can also work in a split view, uh, but we'll come back to those things. The most important tool, or the one that is used most of the time, is what's called the uh, Magic Brush. It's a very special tool, this tool. If I click on this tool, and I'll just zoom in a little bit, and I left click with my Magic Brush, you can see that it immediately starts removing the background or adding to the mask without actually affecting the foreground that I want to keep. And that's why we call it a magic brush because it's it's quite an intuitive tool how it works. As you can see there. And if I hold down the shift, actually I'll just zoom down a bit. And I've got this pan around the around the edge here and I can just pan around my image like this. If I hold down the shift key, it'll just pick up the colour underneath the brush and it really won't dig into my um, into my foreground picture. Remember the computer has no idea what the foreground and the background is here. So this is all purely based on um, the algorithms we wrote to make this all work. And it's quite an intuitive tool. So that's the Magic Brush. And of course you've got controls. You can actually make the Magic Brush much more aggressive by increasing these amounts. You can see how it really digs into the colour very quickly. Now if I come in close here, you'll see it doesn't take long before it actually does start digging into the foreground. So, you know, how you set and where you set these things, and this is the colour range here, how you set these things depends very much on what you're actually trying to do what you're trying to do with an image, what parts of it you're trying to remove. If you've got a very complicated image with say um, 
uh, say the whiskers of a cat coming out or a tiger or something and you want to work very intricately between those whiskers uh, you would adjust these settings and you would also adjust your brush size so that you can actually get in between things and do some very professional looking image removal or background removal. You can do all of that in this program and uh, they're very powerful tools for creating some fancy effects with, uh, with bitmaps but it's like everything, you need to experiment, you need to spend time with this tool and learning exactly all its little tricks and the way it works and that's just, just simply by using it. Um, I can just show you quickly here how to roughly do it but uh, you know every image is slightly different and will, will require a different approach. Now as we create this mask you can see what's happening here. This black area is being added to the mask and I can do this watching uh, in this mode as well as you can see and I can actually add back to the mask here um, by right clicking. Now the other thing I've got with these tools is I've got the ability to toggle my, um, my mouse button so if I want to work, if I prefer to add to the mask with my right click which I'm doing now I can and remove from it with my left click I can do that by using this toggle tool here. Now another powerful tool, uh, it's a bit more of a blunt instrument but it actually does the job pretty well if I zoom to all here I've got these big slabs of area, I just want to get rid of them very quickly. I've got two tools to do that, I've either got Flood Fill or I've got the Eraser. With Flood Fill I just click like that and you can see it quickly grabs uh, all the colours around that area, uh, you know, within that range and I can change these, how aggressive these tools are by fiddling with these tools up here, I can make them more or less aggressive. I'll just clear that mask, so that's Flood Tool, it's very quick but it, it sort of only grabs the colour range that it's working with unless you start editing or changing these, these settings here. Then I've got the Eraser tool. Now as I say it's more of a blunt tool but if I make it very large like this and I've got it set to 1 so it's fully aggressive you can see that it's a very quick way of removing a great big or adding a, a very large area to the mask as so and if I just make the actual size of the tool a bit smaller I can do that sort of thing. Now if I want to work with an area I can zoom right in like this and I can zoom in as so and the size of the tool stays relative to the size of the zoom. So I can use zoom in zoom out to get into close tight corners and I can just use the magic brush like this. Magic brush is a bit aggressive at the moment. And I can right click just to add back a bit to the uh, marks there and I can zoom out here and you can see that it, it doesn't take very long, it's not very difficult at all to actually create a mask around an image using these pan tools as so. And I can zoom and pan down here like this and it's quite quick. And I can just zoom out and before I know it I can basically knock this into shape and obviously in a lesson I'm not going to spend uh, you know half an hour or something you know going to the nth degree making this absolutely perfect. Um, I can actually change the colour of the background too by clicking on this button here. So if I want to make it say this colour here, you can see how I've got this background colour. And depending on what colour you use, it can actually pick up different um, areas you've missed. So that's actually quite a, a good way of doing it as well. You sort of get a bit of an idea of how well you're doing with your mask. But as you can see, in a fairly short period of time, I've sort of knocked this into shape. And if I click Accept here, that will apply this mask as it is into the designing area. So you can see that's that mask there that I've knocked into shape very quickly, and that's when I've spent some time on actually doing a little bit better. And if I bring that into the mask editor, and I change the background colour so you can really see what I've done there, and I zoom in, you can clearly see that I've spent a bit of time making this quite accurate. And that's a great thing with the mask editor, it's a very powerful tool, you can do these sorts of things. Now if I work in split view here, you can see how I've got this mask here. And you'll see the very edges here. Now this is what I was talking about before, these are some of the other tools we can use here, which are our smoothen and sharpen and blur tools. If I smoothen this mask, you can see what's happening, it's smoothing it out. And if I sharpen it back up, it comes back in. Now if I want to do some more advanced like vignette effects, I can use this blur tool here and I can say at set this at 20 and this gives me a very blurry effect like this but this will depend entirely on your artwork, it doesn't suit this duck but the example here is, is that you can actually create advanced vignette effects, in other words vignettes that are actually based on a shape that you've created with the mask you can actually do these sorts of things. 
Okay, so I'll just zoom back out to all there. And other tools, I'll just clear this mask for a moment. Other tools you've got are things like the color range. I can, if I left click and hold this down, you can see how it sort of grabs these colors based on the color range. And if I make this more aggressive, it brings more colors. You know, well, it actually adds more colors to the mask. So you've got this control as well. So I'll do that. So you've got flood fill, which is very quick and aggressive. Just clear. Just to remind you, flood fill. You've got the magic brush. You've got the eraser. And you've got the uh, color transparency. Now the fat line and these uh, effects tools down here have got their own lessons, so I won't go into those now. I've shown you the blur and the uh, sharpen effects. One last thing I'd like to show you is this trace effect. So we'll just cancel out of this and we'll bring it back in. And this is important you understand this trace tool here. If I want to create a contour cut line around, a, around an image like this and I've created a mask, I can come here and click trace and we'll automatically trace it in for me. I click trace now and accept and when I click accept here and bring it back into the program you can see this blue line I'll zoom in just to show you that and I'll select an object mode you can see this blue line that's a clipping mask in other words we've vectorized or traced the actual mask edge okay so now if I zoom out and I come over to this fly out and go to contour cutting here click on that I can actually add an outline to this mask as you can see and click accept and there's my contour cut line so that if I send that to my large format digital printer or printer cutter I can print this out with its mask and I can actually cut out cut it out like it's a decal and if I want to remove I'll just delete that out now because we don't need that anymore if I want to remove this clipping mask it's very easy I come up to the images uh, menu and I come down and I can go to clipping masks here and I can go clear clipping mask or extract it, whatever I want to do, just clear it like that and it's gone. So it's no longer there. So creating masks is actually quite easy in the program as you can see. You simply just, I'll just um, set that off. You bring that into the mask uh, editor like this and obviously I need to reset it a little bit. You've got all these tools on the left hand side and uh, you apply those and click accept and you have your mask applied like that. So that's how the mask editor works. That's the end of this lesson.